Hey everybody, Gary here with Pow Music, and in this video we're going to go over that awesome solo guitar improvisation you just heard in the intro by the great Kirk Fletcher. So we're going to go over everything he played there, phrase by phrase. We're going to break down some of the techniques he used, how he approached the different chord changes, how he took a typical 12-bar blues progression and replaced some of the chord changes with those typical of a jazz blues and how we could kind of incorporate that into our own blues playing. And then we're also gonna go over how we could workshop Kirk's ideas to make them part of our own vocabulary. So that awesome clip that you just watched is from his YouTube channel. Definitely go there. I've got a link in the description. He posts all these amazing videos of him just playing. He starts with some sort of an improv, and then he just talks about his approach, his philosophy to playing, some great ideas about developing your phrasing and your vocabulary and your musicianship. It's awesome. I'm a subscriber. If you don't know Kirk Fletcher, I'll forgive you, but now you know him, so no excuses, go check out his music. He's definitely a household name in blues guitar. He's toured with Joe Bonamassa, Doyle Bromhole, headlines on his own. He's had his albums in the top 20 on the charts for blues, so he's definitely at the forefront of blues guitar. And his background, he's the son of a Baptist minister and grew up playing in church, so he has those gospel chops. He played in a jazz band in high school. so. Even though blues is his main thing, he brings in those influences. The best way to learn is by ear, but what I'm trying to do with the Fret Live animations is help you connect what you're hearing with the context. So how do these ideas fit over the chord? How do they fit within the key? So this way, when you find yourself in different playing situations, you'll have a better idea of where these ideas can fit in depending on what you're playing. As always for Pound Music patrons, I've got the downloadable tab PDF and also the playable tab of everything we just heard Kirk play. And by becoming a patron, you could join us for twice weekly small group guitar hangs where we go over this stuff, guitars in hand as a group. We already went over the Kirk Fletcher lesson last week as I was creating it. I kind of gave the patrons a sneak peek. It sounds kind of cool if you um, hit them both, the, the one and the five and the two and the six. Yeah, I've kind of been messing with that as I've been. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I like that. We should see what we can do just with this. I feel like we just went over so much stuff already. Let's do a, a quick review and then we'll see if we could workshop these riffs and make them our own a little bit. And we went over some of the phrases there live. So the best way to get the most out of the POW Music channel is to join us on Patreon, work on this material in a small group with other people that are working on it and myself, guitars in hand. So links in the description. All right, let's get into it. So right off the bat, man, what really transfixes me is the dynamics. You know, just that first note, really accenting it, and then some kind of palm muting. Right, really playing with the volume and the contrast instead of just right. That's all da 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 da. But Kirk. So here we are in pattern one of the C major pentatonic scale. So to palm mute, just put the palm right where the string meets the bridge. So you still get the note, but it's kind of like a thud, right?
and you could kind of, you know, alternate between the palm mute and ringing out. Now, when we bend this note, the second to the major third, give it a little vibrato. Then he plays the chord. And this is a cool way to play this chord. Just as three notes. So we have the root, the flat seven, and the third. But we're hammering on minor third to major third. And we play the thumb, skip over the A string, catch that double stop with the index finger, and then hammer on. And it comes out of this shape, right? You could play the whole shape. Now he's really going to workshop just those three notes. So we had... Now we have... Now this chord is hugely popular in R&B, I guess gospel, jazz. It's a versatile chord. I'm calling it F over G. And in this case, he might be thinking of it as a version of the four chord, which would basically be the four chord F with the ninth in the bass. But I often see it used as if this is the root G, where it would be root, flat seven, nine, four. So then it's like a G nine sus four. But if C is the one chord, listen to how nice this goes from, from this chord back to C. Or even from F to G to C. So it's just got a little more ambiguity. There's a song that I did a lesson on, Lost in Paris by Tom Mish, where he just went crazy with this chord, just played it so many times. Here's a little clip. Okay, now here's a move he does a lot. So we're sliding, this is kind of like a blues scale riff, in a major context. So what it ends up being is the two to the flat three, which is a great way to get bluesy in major. So we slide back and forth, really just two picks here. And then and then this cool little turnaround lick. And if we think about what's going on there, this is the one chord. Right, it's these two notes, flat seven and third. We're working our way from the one. And then that right there kind of sounds like the, f the four chord. So it's like one, four, chromatic passing. And then there's the root of the five chord. So it kind of sounds like one, four, passing five. Then he plays a G7 sharp five. Now that sharp five, extra dissonant, but it's a leading tone to the third of the one chord. I love that chord. 
one song I love that in the first chord of Oh Darling by the Beatles. Oh darling. So just those first three phrases, developing an idea with these four notes, right? We have, then we have, then we have, right? All in that little box. So what you could do, you know, throw down a loop. I'm going to just do a loop. All right, now he really lets it go here. Classic House of Blues lick right here, but major House of Blues. So this is right out of this E shape in the caged, right? And if you want to learn how to apply the cage system with these Fret Live animations, with song lessons, creative activities, check out the Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program. We're currently in the Spring 2020 Live Cohort. I do the live sessions three times a year but there's also the self-paced, which you could join at any time just without the live classes and classmate interaction, but it's half off, link in the description. So, so kind of sliding in right there on the B string. Then we do that hammer on on the E string. A little vibrato. Love this. Another hammer on. Then backslide. You could backslide either from the blue note or from the. It's kind of some. It's so fast, it doesn't really matter. I think he's sliding from the blue note. Then this cool thing. Now that's now moving into the minor pentatonic. And that whole thing of playing a, a note on this, on a, on a string, and then playing it on the string lower, but sliding into it. Right in the B.B. King lesson, we saw him do that a couple times. Very bluesy. So Mixolydian mode has elements of minor pentatonic, such as the four and the flat seven. This note and this note which are not in the major pentatonic. Major pentatonic is one, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, five, six. But Mixolydian adds the four. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. And C minor pentatonic is one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. So Mixolydian combines the major and minor pentatonic basically. Not exactly, because Mixolydian doesn't have a flat third, it has a major third, but it, there's elements of both there. So it's cool how he uses the Mixolydian thing to transition into the, into the minor. So that's my takeaway, is like if you're jamming in major pentatonic, then you could throw in this Mixolydian. to get your way into minor. And then after he does that. <laughs> so 
So again, he's doing that slide from the blue note down a half step into the pentatonic. There's the four chord, right? Landing on the root of the four chord. And that lick there, that's a classic blues move. One pick, whole step bend, drop down, pull off. And then he does his backslide thing. So that's only two picks. That's two picks. One, two. So this is a one chord to four chord riff. Then he goes to the classic jazz blues move to go from the four nine chord, a little more jazzy than typical dominant seven. So this is an F nine. You could either bar your third finger or you could just play it like this, but leave out the E string. Looks like he's leaving out the third and just going. Then up a half step to a diminished seventh chord. Now here's the thing. The only note different from an F sharp diminished and an F7 is the root. So an F sharp diminished is just an F7 with a raised root. So it's just creating a little more motion. It's, you know, it's that blue note. So it's, it's playing the F7, then the blue note as the root. That brings us to the fifth of the one chord. Then he goes. Beautiful. You know, again, in that house of blues, but the major house of blues that's right off of this shape. Again, that hammer on flam thing. I call it a flam because a, a drummer, when they do a flam, they go, they go like this, right? It's like two very close notes. And that's what, that's what that is. And then again, this, this double stop with the root and a hammer on. And we're bringing it from the one chord, just chromatically, meaning in half steps, to the six dominant seven. So in jazz, instead of one, four, five being the main chord progression, two, five, one is the main chord progression. So if C is one, two is D minor, Five is G, G7, back to one. But in the being it's a blues, we're going to make one a C7. So the two, five, one is D minor to G7, then to C7 in a blues context, in a more jazz, that's a jazz blues, a hybrid. In jazz, 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 even though jazz blues is jazz, but in a, in a less bluesy jazz, it would be D minor. G7 to C major 7, right? That's... Now it's cocktail hour, right? But in blues, jazz blues, dominant 7. Anyway, so what happens here is he's going to do the six, a 6 two, five, one. Now the 6 is the 5 of the two, D minor. So we call this a secondary dominant, meaning even though we're in the key of C, we're going to create momentum to the D minor by inserting the dominant chord, the five chord of the D minor. 
So here we've got this downward motion. Now that wants to resolve to this. Then there's our two down to our five, back to our one. So six, two, five, one, typical way to do the turnaround in a jazz blues as opposed to five, four, one, five, we could do six, two, five, one. So here we go. We got our four chord. And there he kind of seamlessly goes from the A, from the A7. to the D minor seven, then plays off the D minor seven. Then again, that blue note slide. Then he does this cool little chromatic This is basically the G. Right? So And then there's going to be another one, six, uh, six, two, five, one. But he's going to give us a series of lead riffs on the very last chords until he gets to the five. playing the same licks in different octaves. We had So, it sounds a lot cooler to to never play this note with your pinky when you can go slide down there. So as opposed to sounds nice to slide into the root down slide and then you access five six one to the five chord right so the form he's kind of playing with of a jazz blues. The fact that he's playing solo, it's very rubato, meaning out of time. His phrases are in time, but when he hits each chord, the intro was kind of convoluted. It was kind of like a one five, one five, or maybe a one four, one five intro that he gave himself, but he's just, it's a painting, you know? That's the great thing about playing solo, but he insinuated this chord progression. So if you want to practice some of these ideas, the chord progression I kind of heard was this. This is kind of a typical jazz chord progression, and I'm going to link to a couple backing tracks that have this. So we're, as blues, we might go one, four, one, one. We're going to do one, four, one, and then we're going to do a two, five of the four. So if the four is F, a two, five is going to be G minor to C7 then to F7. Then we go F sharp diminished, like we talked about, and then back to the one C. 
then the six, then the two, then the five. Then we'll go one, six, two, five. So here's how this will sound. One, two, three, four. So that's just me trying to make sense of these riffs over an actual chord progression. So as a bonus, I threw in that little BB box riff. Which kind of starts off a second chorus. So he plays more in this video. If you want to see the whole thing, definitely go there. But if you want to learn more about how to use that BB box, check out my in-depth lesson on 12 bars from BB King. And I'll also link that in the description. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'd love to hear what you come up with using these ideas as inspiration. Join the Fretboard Adventures Facebook group. Come hang out on Patreon. Tag me on Instagram, at Pal Music. Do hashtag Pal Music Challenge. All right, everybody, have fun with this stuff. Happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Before I go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the following upper tier Pal Music patrons, William Creighton, Alex Salazar, Andrew Gunhart, Andrew Vogel, Bob Aschetti, Boomer Dell, Brad Tomlin, Brunswick Build, Chris Freeman, David McPherson, Derek Mickle, Don Stringham, Donald James Grass, Donald Laporte, Dylan Williams, Fabian, Fred Locke, Joff Weatherwax, Jake Martin, James, Jason Medina, Jay Brilliant, JK, Jesse Jacobs, John Cushman, Jonas, Joseph McCarthy, Kay Carter, Kent Gresham, Michael L, Michael Varney, Minor Pentatonic, Moo Jang, Patrick Bennett, Paul Davies, Randy Wallingford, Rita Hamami, Scott Lee, Sean Ellis, Steve C, Stephen Pisano, Trails We Hike, Trampus Thompson, and William Sicko. Thank you so much, and thank you to all the Power Music patrons for making this content possible. Happy playing, and I'll see you next time.